Hey mates, I'm Alex. And I'm Gaston. Welcome to Power Mates. This is a place to learn and share about Fabric and Power Platform. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this channel with your friends and colleagues. So, hello everyone, welcome back. Today, we are going to start digging on some of the announcements from the Fabric conference. Today, mirroring for Azure SQL DB. Yeah, that's right, Alex. Uh, starting with uh, some kind of a demo that we have for today, we're going to be explaining kind of what is mirroring. And let's go a little bit back on my screen here so we can check on the announcement. Remember that we share with our uh, audience that uh, public preview of database mirroring is happening right now in Microsoft Fabric. So that is up and running available for everyone uh, right now. So you can check on this blog article coming from Charles Webb, uh, all the announcements around mirroring, uh, what are the options to mirror your data warehouse, uh, real-time data replication, how you simplify the whole process, what it's gonna look like for pro code and no code environments, how you can easily join your mirror databases between warehouse, lake house. Remember that that is available for right now, Cosmos DB, Azure SQL DB and Snowflake. But at the same time, this simplifies the whole process because what is mirroring is just with some configuration uh, you avoid all the ETL framework and you can load your data in a modern, fast and safe way to access this kind of data from different databases, from different data warehouse into the Fabric One Lake. So no need for pipelines and is near real time. We can see that in our demo today. Good one, right, Alex? Yeah, yeah, good one. Um, that sounds pretty interesting. So let's do that. Uh, let's create a Power Automate flow that store information uh, related with the location of the International Space Station in some uh, SQL Server table uh, every minute for say something. And then you, Gaston, can use that data to mirror in on Fabric. Sounds good? Yep, sounds okay. great. Okay, so let's head over to my machine and I'm going to quickly show you um, how to the flow to do that uh, quickly. So I create a Power Automate flow uh, using, you know, recurrence, uh, this as a trigger. So we have here the recurrence is every minute the flow is going to run. Okay, this is the first thing, recurrence. Second point, the HTTP action. We are just calling the uh, open API from the International uh, Space Station. Here, as you can see here, this is the same one, you know, api.open slash notify.org uh, ESS now JSON. This is the, is going to give us the exact location at that moment. If I reload that, you're going to see here that the longitude and latitude change. So we are taking that information here in the Power Automate. Uh, parsing that information here, the body of the of the HTTP action that is a get, the body parsing the body, and then we create a connection with SQL Server. Uh, you know, this is a, the server name, database, the table, and then we send the uh, data for the different uh, columns, the message, uh, the timestamp, you know, that we have, and then latitude and longitude. So we store that in the SQL Server table every minute. So as you can see here, let me go back a second so I can show you that the flow, it's up and running. So the flow run, you know, every minute. So three minutes ago, two minutes ago, one minute ago, 50 seconds ago. And let's see what happened in the last run. So it's uh, execute every minute. Then we call the uh, REST API for the location. We have the result, we part the JSON here, and then we send the information into the SQL table. The message, the timestamp, longitude and longitude, latitude and longitude. So, uh, Gaston, um, so maybe 
you can now uh, showing us how to configure the mirroring for SQL Server. Uh, I guess that that was uh, pretty easy and straightforward for you to configure it, right? <laughs> I was guessing about that, Alex, uh, was not a really great guess from uh, my end, and that's why we come up with this video. So let's do this. Let's head over to my machine, and I'm going to share with our audience how it's going to look like to configure the uh, mirroring feature. So here we are. This is exactly the server that we discussed before with Alex. So he was asking me, hey, Gason, what is the server name? Uh, hey, Gason, check on the SQL database that you bring for this purpose. So I create, first of all, the Azure SQL DB. Then we create the SQL uh, uh, database. Uh, of course, if you check on the details here, you can go and open your SQL Management Studio. Or in this case, I'm going to show you my Azure Data Studio framework. And you can see here that I'm connecting to the server from Azure Data Studio. And uh, I am connecting to this database. And here we are. I can uh, run a query, just a quick select statement, just to check that Alex is running the Power Automate. And I can check the, all the results coming uh, every single minute around the ID, the message, the timestamp, the latitude, the longitude around this. So we have all up and running in Azure SQL server and in our SQL DB. So this is pretty much what we need to understand to start thinking around to mirroring this into our fabric uh, one lake experience. So knowing that, let's recap on a couple of more things. First of all, we need to go uh, again to our Azure instance here and a couple of things that I would love to recall. First of all, you need to resolve the networking across your SQL Server. What that mean? That you need to go to your SQL Server experience back here, go into networking in the left of your pane here, and first of all, go into networking and define that you're going to be accessing for public network access, select networks. As you can see here, that is the option that I choose to connect to. And then the other big topic is establish some firewall rules back here. So I established several rules, one for the Power Automate access, then the access from my local machine, then accessing from the fabric side of things to access the mirroring layer and so on. So I configure these firewall rules first in my Azure SQL uh, server, but also one of the great things around this, and you can go line by line in uh, a URL that we are going to be sharing in this video to a step-by-step -step process. But also one thing that I recall is here in the left pane in security, you need to define the identity. So you have access via manage identity and you need to switch to give access to system assigned managed identity. So this status right. is something that you need to recall to give access to a managed identity to resolve the access to your Azure SQL Server. The other big deal here is this option back here in terms of accessing the resources. And at the same time, you need to uh, create a managed identity to make it happen. So in your Azure portal, you can search for managed identity. In my case, I create a managed identity. This is the name of the admin managed identity that I create so far. So you need to create that managed identity to access your Azure SQL DB instance. With that in mind, uh, the other aspect in those steps is going back to our fabric uh, tenant. In my case, if I go to fabric homepage, my next step was pretty much going into uh, a workspace, in my case, I have a workspace up and running. The next steps here is going to more options and spin up the mirror of Azure SQL DB. This is the step to create the mirror Azure SQL DB. It's going to be asking you with all the details, and uh, let me check on that uh, 
for you. Power Mates Mirror uh, Test. And when you create this, I'm not going to be step by step in the process, but I would love to share with all of you that when you define these steps scenario, in my case, I have several connections to different Azure SQL DBs, but you can, of course, create a new connection here. And what you need to resolve is all these details. So you need to resolve the server name, the database, the connection, the authentication. You can leverage basic authentication with a username and password. And that's where you define the connection to your Azure SQL DB. In my scenario, I already have this up and running. So I am going to share with all of you that I configure this replication. You can check on my end that I can switch here and configure the replication just to check that I have access to our Azure SQL database. And as you can see, you can mirror all your data. That means that it's going to connect to all your tables in your Azure SQL DB, but I can switch back and say, hey, I would love only to replicate one or two or three different tables or my uh, database. So you can check here and you can start looking at the preview of the data coming from your database. In this case, it's loading the preview and it's going to be back up and running. As you can see, I have all the columns that uh, Alex was mentioning before, the messages, the timestamp, the latitude, the longitude, everything is happening here. And that's where you can apply the change and check. Of course, you can, after you configure this, uh, this way, you can use that option here to monitoring the replication and how it goes. So with this monitoring replication, you can see that all the rows are coming in near real time. So every time Alex is pushing a new Power Automate execution, is loading more data into my Azure SQL, SQL DB, and that is replicating automatically in this monitoring replication out of mirroring a uh, future out of fabric. After that, what you can do, of course, is you have everything up and running in your Azure uh, uh, internal monitor feature. So in the workspace itself, you can check on the SQL mirroring here. You can open the SQL mirroring. In the top right of the screen, you have this option to access your SQL endpoint, so you can see your data coming. And as you can see, I have my table up and running here. Same table that I have in my Azure SQL DB, and it's replicating all the data into this load. After that, couple of steps that I did just to showcase this scenario. The first step that I did was go into my workspace and I did this first. I create a new lake house and in top of the lake house, I create a shortcut to the mirroring database. So first step on my end was pretty much remember that you can get data and create a new shortcut. In this case, I leverage the Microsoft One Lake shortcut and I can check on the mirroring database. That was exactly what I did before. So I create a shortcut. Remember that uh, we are avoiding any data movement. I create a shortcut to the mirror database. After that, what I did was pretty much in the lake house, went to the SQL analytics endpoint. I create a quick query and this quick query was just to shape the timestamp. I create a view for that. So I create a couple of columns in my view to uh, convert the date in the timestamp. And I can easily go to my views and check that I have a new view here that is with all the columns that I need in this state. After that, we create, uh, if, if we need, we create a whole model, semantic model back here. And in top of that, we can create a new report layer checking on this option here that allow us to create a new report based on our data. So I just go quick and easy to create a new report. And this is my Power BI report that is showcasing 
pretty much the connection to this view. And remember that this view is going to be up and running all the time, connecting with the latest data out of my Azure SQL DB. So in our case, you can see that I can follow the current timestamp and all the longitude and latitude is coming right away after Alex is pushing a Power Automate option back there. So every nice. time the Power Automate is pushing a new insert row in the Azure SQL DB, Azure SQL DB is mirroring into Fabric and this Power BI report is connecting directly to that uh, mirror database. So this pretty much Power BI report is showing all the latitude and longitude that we address and we uh, insert into Azure SQL DB. So a couple of things that I recall from all this learning experience of uh, creating the mirroring on Fabric. First of all, you can go step by step on this process with this article from the Fabric team, all the networking re requirements that I shared before, all the model and even all the next uh, steps and the prerequisites and all what that we covered before is all in this article. But also I would love to leverage, and I'm gonna share this in the comments of this video, uh, some frequently asked questions around mirroring and you can check and troubleshoot a little bit on uh, these kind of connections to your mirror uh, database. So that's pretty much the process. Uh, looks like a small process, right? Alex, what do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely a lot of steps. I, I need to review again the video just to configure the, the mirror. But yeah, all right, PowerMate, uh, that's all for today's video. Leave your comment, like the video. Uh, if you want us to continue showcasing feature in upcoming videos. Yes, and remember, stay tuned for more in-depth insights, tutorial, and exciting news right here in our channel. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and join us on this journey. Together, let's unlock the full potential on Power Platform and Microsoft Fabric. Yeah.